Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In part five, we're going to follow up on both parts three and parts four, which both finished up with roughly this scene, although they arrived at it by two different ways. So what we've got is a camera animated on a 3D path and a whole bunch of tracker locations. In this particular tutorial part, we're going to focus just on the camera path. So I'm going to turn off the display of the solve tracker locations for a bit here. That's just a JK, a J key to do that. And uh, so you can see the camera is moving along the path. And again, it's always facing exactly to call it the north up to the top. And it's perfectly level and has no roll. And that gives a nice clean horizon line in the produced equivalent 360 VR shot, which is great. So this is a nice mode to have for immersing the viewer in a scenery sort of environment where they might want to take a look at something over a period of time. And they can establish exactly what the relationship is between the orientation of their virtual environment and their real physical environment. You know, where do they have to point in their own, you know, room to see different parts of the scene? Because that relationship is staying constant over time. Now, with some other kinds of, of shows, you might want to do things a bit differently. If you have a very dynamic scene and you're going for a more stomach-turning sort of effect, you may well want to have the camera be looking forward along the camera path, for example. That would be like if you're going to fly through a ravine, say, and you want to intentionally focus the user's attention on some particular direction by that way. You might want to have the camera pointing along that camera direction of travel. So we can do that using a little script here, again in the 360 VR section, and this is a line camera to path. So the parameters here are what the relative orientation is for the camera versus the path. So with 0, 0, the camera is just looking straight ahead. Let's do that now. And now you can see that in the camera path there. And you see that the images are being recomputed to deliver that. And now you're subject to whatever you know, irregularities there are and you know, drifts in the, what the vehicle is doing that originally shot the footage. So you'll see things move around a little bit back and forth maybe that's uh, as the plane is flying along. And you'll also notice that the overall direction is changing over time. You know, here we're starting looking in this direction, then by the end of the shot we're looking along in a completely different direction. So the position of the sun has, has moved by the end of that. Now, like I said, that's good if you're doing something with a, a, a particularly dynamic scene. But if you're trying to have the user focus on some, you know, allow the user to, to look off in different directions to look at something during the course of the uh, presentation, then you're forcing the user to actually change what direction they're doing, they're, they're you know, pointing in their environment to track whatever you're doing, to offset what you're doing. So if they're trying to watch the sun setting over the mountain, the direction that they have to be looking in their room has to change over time to adjust to what we've done here. So this is an artistic decision based on what it is that you're trying to get across and what the experience is that you're trying to do. So there are a bunch of different possibilities to this too, of course. One of the options that you might have seen, let me just undo that, and one of the options you might have seen was to control just the heading, which is what we use, or of course you can also do the heading and the tilt angle. So if you've got a plane that's flying along level, 
and it might have a little variation up and down, you might keep that only heading set on. But if you're trying to have that plane dive down intentionally into something, and you want to have that viewing direction change to reflect that, then you want to turn that checkbox off so that the viewing direction will be reflective of that tilt angle. So just to give you an idea of what you can do with these uh, other angles, let's just do the, the pan angle and set that to minus 90. And you see now it's facing inwards along the curve of this path. So this is more what you get, you know, this is kind of like a bus ride and somebody's looking out the window. So as long as they keep looking in that one direction in their room, they're going to be shown off to the side of the bus as the bus drives along. And here, you know, there's something maybe that you're looking at over here. And you're, you're letting people stay looking at that over time without having to change what they're doing. So the choices that you make here, you know, are, again, artistic decisions that reflect what you're trying to get across. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an introduction to this. There are more complicated possibilities as well. Some of those maybe you can do immediately. Some of them maybe require a little more soft shoe sort of work. Some of them might require some slightly more complicated scripts down the line. But you know, a lot of different things are possible because we have complete control over what's, what's going on here. So thanks for watching so far. And we will be moving on to adding 3D environment, you know, objects into that 3D environment now in our succeeding parts. So stay tuned.